Welcome to Broadish. I'm here today, Felicia Madison, with my co-host, Holly Harper. Hi, Holly. Jocelyn is out sick, but we have two co-hosts today joining us, Natalie Perlin and Olga Namer. Hi. Guys, Hi. how are so. you guys holding up in the heat? Breaking news, there is so much heat in the city today. Who's dying? It is so hot. You remember, so Holly? Hot. You probably remember this. These two girls are probably too young. Remember when we were growing up and they were talking about the ozone layer? Like we couldn't spray our hair. They're worried about this hole that seems to have disappeared. But I feel like that hole's there and it's just like traveling over the world and like heating, heating us up. Okay. Well, first of all, thanks for calling me an old bitch. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Old bitch in the house. No, um, <laughs> no, it's hot as hell outside. Like birds are just dropping out the sky. You heard they find dead animals everywhere. They're not supposed to. Yeah, really? Like, yo, seriously, they really are. It's too hot. It was 120 yeah. degrees in Portland, Oregon yesterday. Oh, it's yeah. Port in Portland. Oh, That's terrible. God. What do you think that yeah. feels like? It feels pretty hot. <laughs> and it's stinky. But speaking of hot... Stop How about that Whitey <laughs> Cooper? Oh my God, guys! William White, out of nowhere, this twenty-one-year-old—I think he's from Oregon—is started uh, posting on TikTok. Uh, he's lip-syncing to '80s songs, and all of these older women. <laughs> Cougars are like fawning over him. He's become an overnight sensation. What do you guys think wow. of him? Well, I didn't feel anything. I watched it. I didn't feel anything. But if he was singing Bobby Brown's My Prerogative, I might feel a little different. You know what I'm saying? If he was like, it's my prerogative, I might be like, all right, now I see it. I wonder, no, if, he he just, takes, I wonder if he takes requests. He just looks like a dude you saw in college. You know what I mean? Like a guy by the cake. Mm. Just pumping, like, use a lot of foam. He seems like he's going to tell me there's it's all foam, you know. All my friends and all the older women are like fawning over him and like drooling, and everyone's like, he could be your son, which is oh what is it? Thing. What is it about him? Because I have this like now I have it up on the phone. What is it about him that that gets you, Felicia? What is it? He's he's well, I think he, well, on some of them he'll like he'll like wink. He'll, he's got this like kind <laughs> of he's got this sexual appeal about him. Very confident, and he's I wow. think he's. I think he's pretty cute. He's not my type, but he's pretty cute. He reminds me of like Leaf Garrett. Do you remember Leaf Garrett? <laughs> you did not say Leaf Garrett. Oh my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The two oh girls my are like, God. who's Leaf Garrett? <laughs> he he no is, idea who Leaf Garrett is. He is a white boy of your, of your. <laughs> he's so. like a, a, mm. a young Brad Pitt. Oh, that's hot. But you know, Brad has looked good for like 30 years. Yeah. Like Brad Pitt, he like he aged and he looks good. Like he just, I don't unlike know. Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, you don't you don't like the way he looks now? How does he I, look? I don't think he's aged very well. <laughs> what do you guys? What do you girls think? As he um, as he's gotten that age, like how his as some people the age and their face like shrinks into itself, like everything just gets compacted. I, I, <laughs> like, I like old men, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and I would date Leo for sure. <laughs> I mean, I, maybe I won't think he's hot, but I would be like, hey, Leo. <laughs> I don't know. Brad no? Pitt's more your speed? Uh, yeah, wait, yeah. May, I don't know. Now it's a complicated question. But yes, <laughs> Brad Pitt probably, yeah. Anyone. I'll take any of them. <laughs> Imagine saying no to Brad Pitt. Leonardo DiCaprio right. seems like a type of boyfriend that will cuss somebody out for you. Does he? He does. Well, Brad Pitt is. I mean, he's the one that defended, um, uh, what's her face, from Friends. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's yeah, her face Gwen from Paltrow. Friends? No, no, Jennifer Gwen Paltrow. Aniston. No, he defended Gwen Paltrow. He oh, that's Paltrow. right. He did. He also cheated on Jennifer. Yeah. Oh, that's you right. know, he cheated on Jennifer, but he defended Gwyneth. Sorry, I have to get my scandals mm. straight. You know, what's funny is I have to admit, like, I kind of like, not fell in love with Leonardo DiCaprio, but I had like a fondness for him when I found out that as a child, he got kicked out of romper room. Like he got <laughs> thrown out. And I was like, I like that. I like a man with a little bit of tantrum. Wow. <laughs> I like him from Titanic. He was so hot. Oh, it's Jack. <laughs> Oh that was Stunning. his peak, though. You know, he sort of went down. That with the ship. was wow! Oh my god, <laughs> he did die. 
<laughs> he was so hot in that movie. Oh my god. Yeah. Really? He was he, so he young was... then. He was so young. Yeah, but was... I was oh well, I was but you young. were like 12 too. You were like, yeah. you know. Do you think that who do you think it was hotter? Like what who do you think had like more girls crushing on them like Leonardo DiCaprio when he was in Titanic or Justin Bieber? Well, I don't know. I feel Justin like Justin Bieber, Bieber when he was has a bigger audience. Freaked out for him. Yeah, yeah, music has a bigger audience than movies. Yeah. They have music. more followers. But back then, it was Jonathan Taylor Thomas, remember? Well, oh, I was yeah. in a different... <laughs> Natalie knows. Like, August is naming a whole bunch of people that just seem like white boys that would have babysat. Like, they just seem like a whole list of children that would have babysat in the 90s. Like, <laughs> well, just, I didn't, I didn't people have, I would have been their babysitter. I don't know. I just... I didn't really have, like, television or whatever. My friend... Crazy Schlesinger, shout out. I don't know. This is me. She used to like these boys. So I used to see that her um, posters and I was like, they're so hot. <laughs> so did you guys, what do you guys think of Whitey? Because I know the older generations, except for Holly. Holly likes her boys a little bit more bad. She's yeah, not I into just, He just didn't do anything. <laughs> I was waiting. I I was waiting for something to happen, and I was like, oh, what's going to happen? And it was like, <laughs> he's just too young for me. And he's I know I'm not a cougar quite yet, maybe almost, but <laughs> I'm still, still too, too young for me. <laughs> Sorry, Whitey, you're not doing it for the broads. I don't know, but he has have millions of uh, followers, and now he has a whole uh, wow. modeling campaign, so he's doing well. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> next, next topic, mm -hmm. Cardi down under Kim Kardashian. <laughs> is supplying the undergarments for the U.S. Olympic team. What the F? Um, let me tell you something. I heard they're pretty good. Yeah? Like, I've heard, yeah. Like, I've heard they're pretty good. Like, they, I mean, first of all, you know that family, they, they got all that ass. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, anybody, they're going to find those stuff to, like, suck it in here and support it there. And I heard they're pretty good. So I'm like, well, if they, can if they can support her ass, they should ha shouldn't have a problem with mine. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, have you seen that donkey? Like, yeah, they're supporting it. They're supporting She's it. She's huge. She's got that huge Brazilian butt lift thing going on. Yeah, which is something that's a whole other topic. But yeah, so yeah, she support. I think it's just great business. I mean, that's just, that's a great business decision. Hopefully, like somebody's <laughs> like shorts won't like rip or anything on TV. I hope it's like, structurally sound enough for athletes and not just for like slimmingness right you, like who wants their athletes skinny let me say shapewear is like such a huge business these days i just think it's funny yeah. that when i was a little kid i used to watch my grandmother like struggle to get into a girdle you know what i mean and like my mom was like a baby boomer of the, and was in her 20s in the 70s and was like this is all nonsense and then that really went away and now shapewear is huge again and uh, I get it because I got a couple pieces and I was like, oh, this is what's up. This is this is amazing. Well, I told you this on one of the, the past ones that I if every time I wear Spanx, it ends up in the garbage at the party that I'm at. Why it, it hurts? It hurts. It like strangles me. It's so uncomfortable. Oh. We go through a lot as women, but that was just like a little bit too much pain for me. Yeah. I did. I told you I wore two pairs of Spanx at my sister's wedding. 10 years two? ago, two <laughs> pairs. Cause my girlfriend was like, you gotta wear two, you gotta wear two. So I just wore two and I just cut a hole in the crotch and there's photos of me like standing at the, at the altar and I'm just like, I can barely <laughs> it. just like holding flowers like. <laughs> and when I, 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 I cut it to get it off and when I cut it, it was like, you know, when you open like the bread, like the dough bread and it was like, like I just wow. went. Just came up yeah. out of it. The, women are like, yeah, we have that and heels. Like, we're never comfortable. That's true. It's not That's true. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's funny. Is my mom is super skinny. She weighs like 85 pounds. She's like mm -hmm. dwindling away. But she still has like a muffin top because it's like the skin. It's like even if you're skinny, when you get older, you just need a little. It's not fair. Women have to wear tight fitting clothes and men can wear like khaki pants with a bloused out shirt, you know? It should be the other way around. I think we should make men wear tight clothes and we get to wear the loose fitting shit. Men will Well, I mean, I think it is funny because I mean, what? yeah, Olga's right. Like we, we're never totally comfortable. Like I got ready for some event recently and it was like, I had like, they're not Spanx, but some kind of shaper. I had shaper on and I had heels, right? I had heels on and I wore this like new crazy, like fun wig. 
and I had lashes on and I was just like, holy shit. Like mm -hmm. I, I have to be very careful about how I sit, how I eat, like and everything then, I do. Yeah. And then we have our periods. It's just so hard. Yeah. Your period be trying to kill you. You can get knocked out by period. Yeah. And then yeah. they expect us to be normal. No. <laughs> It's hard. It's not going to happen. The other night I had to tape my nipple into a dress so that I oh wouldn't my. have like a, a nip slip. And then I had to rip off the tape and it hurt so bad. <laughs> ah. oh, wait, is that like the little nipple covers? Those, those no, like... it's just like clear fashion tape. Okay. But wow. it hurts coming off, that's for sure. <sighs> it's what, wow. what we have to do. I, I use those nipple covers. I love them. That's all I have to wear. <laughs> mm-hmm. Look at you, your little share, girls. Share with them. Not that anyone cares, but yeah. So then my, my, my breasts basically end up looking like my shoulders. Uh. <laughs> well, I remember when they told, I, I read somewhere, they were like, your breasts are supposed to fall halfway between your shoulder and your elbow. Really? So I'm always like trying and to what, like. And what is that? And if it, that means they don't sag? Yeah, that means that they're in a good place. Like that's oh, the good, that's I the sweet that. spot. That's the sweet spot. Between wow. your elbow and your shoulder. So I'm always just like. And then someone <laughs> told me you have to do like this pen trick to see if it if they sag. If you put the pen under your boob uh -huh. and it, it stays there, then they, then I guess it's sagging. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's true. Some, There's some comedian that, that mentioned true? that and said she had like 20 pens underneath her boobs. <laughs> I don't have any boob to do that. I know. I don't either. I, I, I wish I had enough boob to hold the pencil. Have you had any kids, yeah. Olga and Natalie? Have you had any kids? No, no they're both single. Oh, so y'all know about know. that breast y'all know about that breast pump life. Y'all know about that breast pump mm. breastfeeding life. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you do that, the girls are just kinda, you know. Is it just you're gone for life? That's it? They're done? Yeah, I mean unless you want to get them fixed. But like, there's no snap back with your titty. Like, there's like your waist can snap back. There's no snap back on your boob. But your and what about your vagina? Does that snap back when you after <laughs> the that, no with the baby? Uh, I mean, you could do exercises to bring it back. You could do Kegel, Kegels. How do you pronounce it? You could do yeah. that to like Kegels. I'm you it right could... now. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you would do that. Whenever someone mentions the word Kegels, like everyone's vagina starts contracting. <laughs> I don't know what a. I don't know how a Kegel. I don't know how to do it. You know what you do when you're when you look at me when you yeah. go to the bathroom and you pee like you start and stop your pee like you get a stream going and you stop. That's it. a Kegel. Yeah, yeah, because oh, you're controlling your okay. yeah, and it tightens up the veg. So it if up I'm your whole always area. holding in my pee, that's why I have a very tight vagina. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I, I have no idea. About Stop that. bragging, Olga. Talking about vaginas and birth control. We'll move on to Britney Spears. Uh, there was an interesting article. You all know that she's trying to get rid of uh, her father controlling her life, but what? One interesting thing was that he wouldn't let her take her, I think it was her IUD out. She wanted yeah. to have kids. And they called it, you know, forced sterilization, which is actually a problem. Um, but I found that very disturbing, as did a lot of other people. I found this whole situation with her disturbing, but that was particularly disturbing. But that's some handmade tail shit. Like, that is... Well, but that means he's letting her have sex, which is nice. <laughs> And my father wouldn't let me have sex. So like, <laughs> I guess that's I the just, positive. I just feel like he doesn't want her to have kids. He doesn't want the checks to stop. And he's made a hell of a lot of money off of her over the past, what's it been, like 18, 15 years. No, thir yeah. about 13 years. It's my daughter. It was right. It's funny. I always know when Brittany went crazy, because that's when I had my daughter. Like, I was in the mm -hmm. hospital, like, holding my baby, and I looked up, and Brittany was like, ah! I was like, that was like my memory. I was like, oh shit, that little girl, that little girl flipped out. Uh, but this is what I have to look forward to. <laughs> this is what I have to look forward to. <laughs> but no, he's made a lot of money off of her. I and mean, when you really look at it, like, can you imagine a man being controlled that way in this country? With like, it just no, no, crazy. no, not with a damn birth control. That's insane. Yeah, no, it's it's really sad. And but on, on the flip side, she's sort of been under this control, as you said, for 13 years, and she's just now beginning to speak out. And I feel like she's 
with this boyfriend now and they kind of want to have a relationship and maybe a kid. Uh, and she's almost like being controlled now by just another man. Well, is she? Yeah, she's got like a boyfriend. I know, but is she being but mainly yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they just assume that every boy controls a girl. (sighs) I don't know. I just feel like she I feel like she definitely has some issues, but you know, maybe I think maybe there's some merit to what they're doing, but I feel like they've gone way overboard. Um and it's abused the privilege. But the thing is, when you keep somebody on lithium and you keep them drugged up, they become very vulnerable and susceptible to predatory people. Mm. So maybe now that she's off of it, maybe she's with a better guy. But now it makes some of her relationship choices make total sense, knowing that she was on forced lithium for about a decade. Yeah, your choices are going to be bad. Yeah, it's interesting because we're changing the subject a little bit away from her, but we're talking about men dominating women. And I had an interesting situation happen to me. For the second time in recent time, a male on the phone who I was talking to, what I felt was rationally hung up on me. Like, if you're gonna, no, on purpose. He's like, well, if you're gonna talk like that, I'm just not gonna talk to you and hangs up. You little bitch. Like, I just kind of feel like, really, dude, you're just gonna hang up. He, yeah. He was unable to control the conversation and he took it out. And I just feel like we're always the ones that are viewed as like the hysterical, irrational ones. I would, would you, any of you guys ever hang up the phone talking to a guy, like a business meeting? Never. No, I've hung up on up on a hell of a lot of people, but never with business. This is all personal stuff. It's never with business. That's crazy. It was crazy, and I called him. I said, "You hung up on me. That's so rude." And, and then he wrote, say? he wrote back, "I didn't hang up on you. Uh, if you want me to call call you back, I will." And I'm like, um, "You most certainly hung up on me, and I just maybe, don't want to be treated that way." And I'm maybe not. Maybe he was in the elevator. No, he said, "If you're going to talk like that, I'm just not going to. This is not going to work." Bye. And he hung up. What was the discussion about? Yeah, like what was he? What was he complaining about? It, I was discussing, well, I know I posted it on Facebook how I, I'm not allowed to perform at um, oh, another Oh, yes. Club. And so I was explaining to him how, you know, the person that asked me to perform was an F comedy comic who I have a very good relationship with, was sort of like as a favor was asking me back. And I said, and he's now at your club, so don't you think that's hypocritical that my not, I'm sorry, I'm yeah, taking that back. Right. Someone that worked at F comedy club who had a good relationship with me is now at your club. Do you think it's a little hypocritical that you're not letting me come? He's like, well, if you're going to call names and call me hypocritical, I'm hanging up. So if you're going to characterize him as being unseemly, he's hanging up. Right. That's just a way to control the narrative. It's like if you're going to complain and say things that I don't like to hear, then I'm going to hang up. It's a way to control the narrative. He's just having a – he just threw a little mantrum. That's a little mantrum. A mantrum. (laughs) He did. He just threw a little mantrum. Because women get used to hearing shit all the time. You know what I mean? And so for him to be like, well, if, can you imagine that? Like, hey, you ran that red light. Well, if you're going to say mean things like that, I'm just going to drive off. Like, no. <laughs> no, you, you hear things you don't like to hear in life, and you handle it. You didn't mm-hmm. call him a name. You described his behavior. And, I wasn't and he didn't like that. It. I was asking, don't you think it's hypocritical? Yeah, I, you're I, I think yeah. when men are wrong and and women tell them they're wrong wrong calmly, they don't know how to they don't know how to respond. They don't know what to do because it's like shit. She's right, so then they just hang up. Yeah, they go. I don't want. I don't have time for this. Right? Or like, I, oh, no. I, or exactly. they do this. This is my favorite thing. This conversation is over. Most men, the younger they get, the better they are. Right. Uh, You know what I mean? Unless they had moms that just kissed their ass. But a lot of younger guys are a lot of times raised by single moms and who are able to respect a woman's authority unless they got their ass kissed all the time. A lot of times guys are closer to my age. It feels a certain kind of way. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, I've had people say things to me like, I'm not one of your kids. And I'm like, you don't (laughs) fucking act like one of my kids. (laughs) Don't act like my kid and I won't shush your ass. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, I don't like to take a lot of shit. And I've noticed that female uh, actresses, comedians, 
writers, directors can take no a lot better than men can handle no. Men see no, I mean, it's funny, I never got a guy tell me a long time ago, when a woman tells a man no, that's a negotiation. That's the right. beginning of a negotiation. Yeah. And it's just like, when you just say, no, that's it. And my dad taught me, my dad taught me, when dealing with men, you say no, you say no, and you go and talk about something else, or you avert your attention, your eyes, you walk away, you physically change your topic. Make them work to, make them work to negotiate. Just say no and keep it moving. Well, I think Natalie and Olga, you need to find a young man with a single, that has a, sing, a single mom. <laughs> they seem like they might make a good husband, no? Well, I, I think a part of me has given up on older men because I feel like if they had wanted to get married, they would have already. But if I date someone a little younger, maybe they aren't like a lifelong bachelor. Well, you need a divorce, the older man. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. You need yeah, a man who already fucked up. Life, for sure. He yeah, already fucked life. up, and he's bringing you his best now. Yeah, and he's he, he's been breaking <laughs> down, you know? He's been, he's been broken down, yes. <laughs> but don't you think, like, the reason why maybe they got divorced, that hasn't changed? Maybe it was her fault? No, oh, it's never the woman's fault. Oh, sometimes <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't well, know. I do not, know. Not in, not in my case, obviously. <laughs> you got a damn child bride with you, girl. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I mean, I've told like my women friends that are, you know, like they're in their, in their 40s, like after, after 40, I'm like, you know, you need to stop looking for that guy that's never been married or hasn't had kids. Do you know what I mean? You need to find somebody who's already been at the rodeo once and now mm -hmm. he knows what to look for. This whole idea that at, at 40, 45, you're going to find this magical guy who's never been married, who's never had any kids. Yeah, no. People like, want that? Yeah, I've heard women say, I don't want a guy who's already been married or had kids. I'm like, yeah, I could see you saying that at 30. Right. But not at 40. And hell no, at 50. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I, man. I would want someone who has kids already. That, you know. Because you don't want kids or... Uh, yeah, I guess it's less pressure on me. And the whole point of having kids is that they take care of you when you're older. And I can be the best. <laughs> so I just be the best stepmom ever. And then they yeah. take care of me. With yeah, my, kids, my kids are going to take great care of picking the old age home for me. <laughs> like Felicia, God forbid a billion times, God forbid, God forbid you got divorced or something, right? But th this new stepmom comes and she gives them like weed and just the best stepmom ever. And then they start taking care of her and I do. <laughs> Somehow I could see that happening. That would never happen. I'm joking. <laughs> God forbid. I yeah, have to admit the idea, I have to admit the idea of some other woman taking care of my kids that kind of like unnerves me. Like, no. Uh, You'd be no, like, no, 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 no. Stay the yeah. fuck away. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very much like, these are my kids. So I'm kind of like, mm -mm, it's nope. like, did you see like stepmom? Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yes, I did. But that, and obviously was sad. But before she died, oh, the, I don't want to give away the ending. You don't want to give, a, you don't want to give away a movie that's 20 years old? <laughs> I can't give it away. It's only been 20 years. That was like my favorite movie. That was a good movie. We're, we so should good. discuss next time. There's a new movie out that I haven't watched. That's on Netflix. It's called like, um, it has the title and it is sex and it got panned, but my friends watched it. They said it was good. And it's about a woman that gets married, uh, but she had a really hot boyfriend before her husband. And it's like the story of her, like now she's calmed down and settled down. And now she's married to like, it's still a pretty hot guy, but not as hot yes. as the, previous one uh -huh. so it's, it's interesting uh, we, we'll have to watch that and discuss it next time <laughs> is it still on netflix yeah i think it just came out i'm gonna so, watch it okay. yeah it sounds, it sounds interesting i thought yeah. it, they I, described it, it to me it, it, it didn't get it got bad reviews but uh the, uh, the way it was descri described to me my friends really liked it so i'm gonna watch it when there are movies that get bad reviews that become cult classics like yeah. office space Mm -hmm. Office Space got bad reviews and didn't do well at the box office at all. And that's like a cult classic now. And nice. Zoolander. Zoolander. Zoolander was hilarious. I know. People yeah. hated it, though. Why did they hate it? I didn't understand. Why did people hate it? I think I, in general, crit critics don't have a good sense of humor. 
Maybe. See that. I'm yeah. wearing Girls Trip came out. I was dying. I went to see Girls Trip on opening weekend, and the, it was like a huge movie theater experience. Like it was packed, mm -hmm. you know, wall to wall. People were dying laughing, like dying laughing. And then I saw some critic. It was like, eh, it was okay. I was like, uh, <laughs> I don't think you asked people in the audience because they were dying. Wow. Well, we well we really segued off of uh, Britney Spears, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were talking about Brittany. <laughs> we were talking about Brittany, but it, it was uh, all good. Um, anyway, just a quick before we sign off, I uh, just want to say a big congratulations to Natalie Perlin. She had her headlining mm -hmm. at uh, Caroline's yes. this week. Thank which, you. Hey. Yeah, went really well. And also, That's Holly great. Harper had your first oh. installment of your show last night, Hello Late. Yes, I did. Yay. It was so, great. I'm actually considering purchasing some um, wigs. Because <laughs> I just love how, it's amazing how putting on a different like head, uh, like, yeah. you, you're like a chameleon, it's like a different person. Girl, I got about 30 wigs and uh, I love them to the core. Once I realized, no, don't mess with this hair. Just put on a different head. Like, I wear one every day, <laughs> every single day. If I don't have my hump, really? Oh, you wow. have my real hairs. This is my real hair, and then like the this is just like the the pony, because I need oh, to have that oh. height for because I have like kind of big boobs and I want my face to be like bigger. <laughs> so I have to that's so the, funny. The you should make fun oh, of. No, I get it. There's a really funny um interview between um Joan Rivers. And Lucille Ball, and Lucille Ball looks at her and uh, points to her earrings and said, "Are those real?" And she, and uh, <laughs> Joan Rivers said, "The earrings." And Joan Rivers says, "Actually, it doesn't matter what you point at. No." <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, Joan Rivers. So no, funny. but you, no, Felicia, we got to go wig shopping together. I would. Because... I want, I've always wanted to see what I would look like as like a you know like a Marilyn Monroe blonde. Girl, I hit the wig shop so much last year that when I started going in, they were like, no, no, hi, 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 Holly, hi. Like, they know me. <laughs> they take me aside. And I'm just like, mm. yeah. Oh, in, our, in our neighborhood, they don't even let you try them on. Oh, oh really? I have to come to wow. you. <laughs> yeah, you got to. Well, you know, yeah, they have a rule. that like, you can only try on three in my, in my spot. You? you could try on three. But I was yeah. kind of fudge it. I'm like, I bought six weights last month. I could yeah. try them four. Like, well, that uh, was the that was the conclusion to my my booking problem was that I need to have an alias <laughs> and just four <laughs> as a different person. So I'm gonna get a that wig. would be funny. And I was talking to someone, and we're gonna uh, my alias is gonna be Sasha Levy. <laughs> That's kind of hot. That's kind of hot. What color hair? I think I'm gonna go like a blonde Marilyn Monroe. What do you think? Yes, you can get yes, or like a um, like a rose gold, like a rose gold, mm. like some rose gold highlights in the front with like a swoop bang, maybe come over. Or, or, or a rabbit, or like a Jessica Rabbit, like yeah. Red. Okay, guys. Well, thank you for joining us for Broadish. I'm Sasha Levy. <laughs> I'm Holly Harper. Thank you. Algenamer, thanks. Natalie oh, Perlin. was I not supposed to say that? <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you, Alga and Natalie, for joining us this week. Yes, thank you. Thank you.